All right, Alex. Yeah. Alex, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, born right in Pico Rivera. Pico Rivera? Yeah. Suburb of LA. And uh, tell me about your childhood. You had both your parents when you were growing up? My well, growing up was my mother and my grandmother, my great grandmother. Uh, daddy's in prison, you know. Uh, no, no tell father figures. Just, my, just, just women, raised by women. And, uh, and how was your childhood? Um, it was all right. You know, it was, uh, I don't have too many bad memories of it, but it was, uh, uh, now that I'm older, I look back at it, uh, it lacked a lot of affection. And uh, you joined the gang at what age? About 14, I became a full-blown member. Yeah. And you're, uh, you, you've done prison time, I assume, right? Yes, sir. When did that start for you? Uh, well, it started, it started in juvenile hall, I'm 13, 14 years old, you know what I mean? And then uh, when I was 17, uh, I was around my older homeboys, people older than me, dudes were like 25, 26 years old, you know? And uh, I started doing our robberies with them, and we started doing like real heavier crimes, you know, I was doing heavier crimes with older dudes, you know what I mean? So uh, I was prisoned at 18. Yeah. And uh, so that means uh, YA at that point? No, state prison. Oh, prison? Yeah, I'm in state prison. At 17, at 17 years, eight months, they convicted me. And what was that for? Uh, laying in wait, attempted murder. Attempted murder? It's and laying in wait. Parked, down, we parked in front of his house waiting for, waiting, for, waiting for anybody to come in and out of the house to jump out and get him. Oh, okay. So how many years did you do? Uh, 16 years, eight months. 16 years. So, I mean, prison kind of, you were in and out, I assume? Uh, I did my 16 years straight, got out. I stood out for about three years. So, uh, you know, I had kids and everything, stood out. And then um, I started fucking around in my neighborhood around again, started hanging around my neighborhood again, and started just, you know, and I started violating and just, just you know, spiraled all back down again. Yeah. Now I'm back running around the streets again. You've been out for how many years? Uh, since 2014. And did, did that lifestyle affect your, like, do you have family? Do you have kids? Do you have wife? Uh, well, I, I didn't have my family until after I got out of prison. But yeah, it does affect, it, now, now it's affecting, it, 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 it has affected my, my relationship with my wife, my kids, everything, yeah. Yeah, did you raise your kids? Were you there for uh, from, from, the, from all through the pregnancies, from my son and my daughter, I was at the whole pregnancies, and I was there until my daughter was four, and my son was uh, three. We're well, going on three, that's when we uh, broke up. Okay. Yeah. And uh, looking back at your life, I mean, do you have regrets of this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have regrets, but at the same time, I'm like, fuck yeah, I did it, I chose this lifestyle, you know what I mean? So I'm doing it, you know, I mean, what, what more can I say other than that, you mean, you know? You're still doing it. Um, I run around still, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so did drugs come into the picture for you at some point? Um, in prison, you know, prior to prison, I, was, I wasn't too heavy into drugs, you know? But uh, in prison, there's not much to do, you know what I mean? You're sitting in a cell, you know, I did all my time, level four, 180, you know what I mean? I did my last seven years, slammed down. So it's like, um, it's one of the only things to do, it's like one of the, one of the escapes, I guess you say, you know? Yeah. And uh, was it heroin? Heroin. Yeah, it's, that's, that's, that seems to be the go-to drug for the... Yeah, it would knock you up, put you up for the day, you know, kills the whole day, kills time, you know, it just, you know. So what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of stories can you tell? Oh, man, I'm trying to go, no, <laughs> man. I'm sure you got more than a few. <laughs> I mean, some, you know, like foul ones, and some yeah. are just like, you know, it depends what you... What, give, what, give, give me the most horr horrifying story you got. You can, you can be vague about the details if you need to, right, to well, protect, the, uh, uh, protect yeah. the guilty. Um, all right, Chase, so I, was, I, was I was a porter, you know, a uh, janitor in the buildings, and uh, we're, we're waiting for someone to come back for a visit, and he's bringing in dope, you know, waiting for, everybody's waiting for him to get back. Well, uh, my door stays cracked open because I go in and out, I'm a porter. So when the dude comes back for the visit, I go straight over there, I'm like, hey, come on. He's like, well, hold on, let me, let me do my thing first, come back in a half hour or so. And I was like, man, I come back in a half hour and he's dead. He's, 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 he's OD, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, damn, what does do? So we'll go call, call someone who's waiting for another guy, right? I say, hey, man, come here. What do we do? And he was like, fuck, how long has he been like this? I don't know, he took me back in a half hour and I came back in a half hour and this is how I found him. And he said, well, where's the dope at? I said, I don't know where the dope's at. And he was like, what do you mean you don't know? I go, I don't know where the fucking dope's at. I don't know, he didn't have no dope. So we looked around real quick for dope, we couldn't find none. So this dude, older dude, about 50, snapped his fingers and goes, fuck, it's still inside him. And I was like, all right, well, okay, well. And he was like, get some gloves. And I was like, get some gloves, I guess we get some gloves. So first we get gloves and then he's like, go break some razors. I'm like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? He's like, we gotta get that out of his ass. And I was like, what do you mean we can get out of his ass? He goes, we're gonna cut his ass open, and I'm gonna put his glove, a fucking glove on, and I'm gonna get the dope out of his ass. That's what we did. You know, and that was pretty fucking foul, you know? It was just like a, it was experience, you know what I mean? It was, 
just for dope. But just to get that stupid dope, you know what I mean? We got a trouble behind it at the end of the day anyway, you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, that was a... Yeah, that was a... I'm a bad members in prison, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't good. It's a, but that, that was in prison? That was in prison, yeah. yeah. And that's... Is, is the gang life in prison? How, how is, I mean, I know it's different, but how is it different than uh, outside? Um, on the street? You know, your, your homeboys in the streets, you're not only homeboys, your friends. You're, a lot of them went to school with them, you have friendships with them, you know, you know their families and stuff like this, you know? So there's a lot more leniency amongst each other, you know? But in prison, there's no leniency, it's no, it's, 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 uh, when you get there, they give you the verbal, you get your verbal, you know, the rules and, and regulations, and they give you something to read that has all the rules, and those are your two warning shots. Anything after this, no more, we're not talking to you no more now, it's just, we're not we're gonna do with you, we don't have time. We're, you know, back at that time when I was in prison, there was a lot of race riots, a lot of racial uh, issues, you know? Right now, it's not so bad with the racial issues no more, back how I was in, in Calipat and Ironwood and places like that, so, uh, you don't have one opportunity to mess up. You messed up, you're out of here. We, 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 have, we can't afford to have no fuck ups, no, none, none of that. Everybody has to be ready to go at all times. Everybody has to be thinking all the time. You can't be like, oh, I just woke up and I wasn't thinking. There's none of that, you know? It's a lot, lot, lot less lenient, you know what I mean? Yeah. Were you around for the drive by era or not? Yeah. Really? yeah. Heavily, yeah. So drive bys were just for what purpose? Just, just to kind of shoot somebody, shoot someone, you know? Uh, back then, back then during drive-bys though, uh, I don't know if there's more guns in the streets or what. I don't know what the, the reason why, but back then it's like everybody shot back. Like now you can shoot at somebody and they half the time they won't even really shoot back at you. But back in the drive-by times when you came by and you shot at somebody, it's because they were gonna sh shoot right back at you. You know what I mean? Most of the time, you know what I mean? It was, so it wasn't like uh, you're just driving on, it's like driving from seventh street, right? you're just stopping and shooting somebody. You know, you expected for them to shoot back or like they might have homeboys on the side of the street or something, you know what I mean? It was a lot more gunplay. I mean, like now it's not that much, you know, when I was growing up in the, in the early 90s, in the late 80s, early 90s, especially over in the Southeast, South East, with Pico and Whittier, Norwalk and all that, it was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of gang violence, you know what I mean? It was like all day, every day, you know what I mean? And it wasn't like, at the middle of the night, it was like, let's go right now when school gets out, because there's just trains, air buds, you know what I mean? There's trains, airplanes, there's traffic, no one's gonna hear the gunshots two, three blocks away, like they will at night, you know? So that was the main thing, like after school, going over to my enemy's neighborhood, the high school's in their, ne in their neighborhood, and the other little area where they hang out with, with their bitches, it's just we'd go over there, look for them, and try to shoot them, you know what I mean? It's plain and simple, you know? As an outsider looking at the gang world, it just seems ridiculous to me that, like, there can be somebody who lives in the town next to you who's your enemy for no good reason other than just he's, he lives across the tracks from you. Well, the thing is... Uh, and you could be friends with him today. You're right. It, 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 it does make sense, but very few things do make sense. And what other people understand on the outside, we're like, how can you fight for the street or fight for this? They're not fighting for that. They're fighting for a blood feud that already exists because maybe uh, while you were in junior high, they killed your friend fucking Michael, who was from the gang, and you weren't before you, though. You know, maybe, you know? So now you've already lost friends. This blood feud is going on. It's not even about this or that. Anyone else about they're killing us. We gotta go kill them now. That's what, that's what is happening, you know? It's almost like human nature. On, on yes, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like for gangs are like tribes. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like tribal warfare. You know what I mean? Pretty much, you know. Yeah. And your kids are following your dad's footsteps? No, or no, no, hell no, not at all. My 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 baby's mom was born and raised in Catalina Island. I mean, she, they're 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 white people. You know I mean, I don't mean I don't mean to say disrespectful or anything, but they're square people. You yeah. mean they, they, they worked all their life. You know what I mean? They're not they're not they're not being raised in a bad environment at all. Well, what, you know? what do they think of their dad? Oh, they love me, my kids love me, you know? They, they, don't, they don't see nothing other but me, you know I mean? There's no me getting them, getting them bottles, getting up and watching PBS with them, or getting up and putting a movie on for them, that's why they know, you know what I mean? So you have a good relationship with them? Yeah. With your kids? Yeah, yeah. Well, since, since me and my, since uh, me and, uh, her name is Grace, since me and Grace have broke up, it's been a little more, uh, uh, she uses them a little more as sort of tools to hurt me a little more, you know what I mean? Because she can't remember, I care less about her no more, but so now she likes to use the kids as a way to, you know, you know, what can you do, you yeah? Yeah. And how has the gang experience like changed since you were young? Oh, it's, it's a week now. It's not the same anymore. It's not the same. It's just not. It's just. I know. I remember when I was younger. The older guys used to say that about us. You know. I don't know. It's just, I, I, I now I know it's not just something that's being said because you look back at it. You're like, man, back then we would have done this or we would have done that or or like back then those guys couldn't have come into our neighborhood right on the wall back then. They couldn't. They, you know what I mean? Like things like that. You know, like. Uh, he knew the difference, you know? There's more loyalty? The more, a lot more loyalty, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's funny, I tell this to people, a lot of people don't understand it, but I think I blame that attitude on, like, on fucking rap music, you know what I mean? On black music, it's really like, 
fuck everybody, I'm trying to get money for myself. Like, they're all individualistic. How can you be from a gang and be uh, all by yourself? I mean, that's not, that's not a gang mentality, you know what I mean? That's a gang mentality is lacking now, or like one for everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody's kind of like, why join a group if you want to be alone, you know? So, yeah, it lacks a lot of loyalty. What's the most important lesson you've learned in life? Don't tell nobody what you're doing, ever. Or where you're going, or where you're, just don't, you just don't tell nobody nothing, pretty much, you know? That's the best way I can say it, yeah. Where do, you, where do you see your life going from here? How old are you? Right now I'm 43. 43? Um, Still young? Yeah. Um, it's hard, man, because, you know, I've been doing jail or prison all my life, man, you know what I mean? And my dad did it, my grandpa did it. I mean, my dad's still in prison right now. He's 60 something years old, he's still in prison, you know? And uh, my uncles and stuff like that. I look at them, I'm like, fuck, man, I don't want to be 50, 55 years old still going into violations, you know what I mean? I'm 43 and I can't do it anymore. I go in there now and I'm ready, like, I can't do this shit. These people get on my nerves, I can't, I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? But, but with your record, it's gonna be hard to get a square job, right? Yeah, it's hard, it's hard you know what I mean? But I don't even worry about trying to have a job. I mean, honestly, I don't worry about that because I just worry about trying to get money however I can, wherever I can, and just, you know, unfortunately, that's the, the, the situation I put myself in, you know what I mean? So, and I accept it for what it is, you know? At the same time, though, if I already put my, if I put my habits to the side and I go to a job agency and they'll give me a fucking job and I can't go work, you know I mean? It's not impossible for me to get a job. I mean, that's, you know, that's just, uh, to me, that's making excuses, lying, you know what I mean? For not really wanting to work, you know? Yeah. Cause it, it, you get a job. Do you, do you think the gang direction for, for a young man is, is more a product of environment or the, or the family or the, the friends he had? The, 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 what, what do you think got you into the gang or gets a, gets a young man to follow that path? Because if you grew up in Santa Barbara or something, you, you probably yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, you got gang members coming out of Santa Barbara and you don't, I don't understand that. I mean, it's like, how could how be ill? I say it's the environment a little bit, but at the same time, it's also a... Um, a like um, a lack of uh, not belonging somewhere. Like you need to get in, yeah, you know, life is social. You, know, you gotta be put in some type of group. You gotta be, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be accepted by whoever you wanna be accepted by, but you gotta, everybody wants to be accepted by somebody or whatever. It becomes whatever. your family. Yeah, you know what I mean? So you need to, you know, um, and maybe gangs, they look good to people, you know what I mean? Like it, it makes it, it looks good, you get girls, whatever the fuck, you're doing this, you're doing that, but I mean, you don't, you don't see the other side. You know, you know, before, like, when you join a gang, like, you're going to prison. You're from a gang, you're going to prison. Now there's people, there's gang members who are like hoping to dodge prison. It's like, that's not, that's part of the lifestyle. Prison's gonna happen, you know what I mean? Just for how long is the question, you know what I mean? But you, if you're being a gang member, you're going to prison. Otherwise, you're not being a gang member. You're just, I don't know what you're doing but you're not being a gay member. What, gamer. what advice would you give to a young man who's considering doing this today? Just, um, I'm not gonna say it's not worth it nowadays because I don't think it was ever really worth it. Uh, to other people, it was worth it to me. I, I have no uh, regrets about it, you know what I mean? But um, I would just say make sure it's really what you want to do because you got to carry that around you forever, you know what I mean? You know, some people can't, some people can't, some people aren't capable of the violence that they think they are, and so they do it, and then they gotta sleep with themselves, or they get, some people, I've seen some people not be able to handle the violence that they do, you know what I mean? That it, it, it affects them somehow, you know what I'm saying? It, um, everybody thinks they could do this, they could do that, but when you actually have to get up there and do it, and you do it, how are you gonna feel afterwards? You, know you mean? live with or, it for the rest of your life. Yeah, you're gonna sleep, sleep with yourself and after that, you know what I mean? Or, or you know? So it's like, it's make sure, make sure you're really, you're really ready to do, you know, ready to make that, take that step, you know? And to be able to control it, you know, once you do take that step and you know you can take that step, now it's a question of like having to decide when to do that. Like now it's like, it's not an issue of like being both for prideful anymore. Now it's like, I already know I could do that, but what can I do it and get away with it? And if I do do it, what's gonna happen afterwards? Or, you know, now it's a question of that. It's not about, uh, you know. Um, pulling the trigger. Yeah, it's not just pulling the trigger no more, you know what I mean? Or, you know, it's just, you know, there's, there's other things you gotta, Contemplate, you know? All right, Alex. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, and uh, good luck with wherever you go from here, man. Uh, thank you for having me, man. Thanks, man.